Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining Women in Ministry uh, television broadcast on tonight. I am Prophetess Dr. Gwendolyn Bradley, and I am so blessed that you decided to take time out of your busy schedule on the Tuesday evening and join me on this evening. And I believe that it will not be a waste of your time. I pray it's not a waste of your time, but I believe that God has a word that he has given me to share with you on this ninth day of February, and I'm probably dating myself. Uh, for those of you who are going to join later and watch this uh, broadcast, uh, this fresh fire broadcast. But anyway, uh, the day that I'm recording it is the 9th of February. And I believe that this is your birthing day. God is going to birth something awesome in your life on this day as a result of you sacrificing your time and joining for fresh fire. Yes, fresh fire. You know, we all need a fresh fire. We cannot operate from yesterday's manna. The Lord has given us something new. There's a new beginning for us every day, uh, according to what your agenda is, what your timetable is, what your calendar is. The Lord does not want you to operate in a stale type of anointing, but he wants you to re receive a fresh fire every day and that is available to us well um this month is february and it's known as the love month i think i talked a little bit about that last month this month of february and all that it means prophetically in the month of february and as i was praying and asking the lord um those of you who will be joining today what you needed for today and i believe that he has given me what you need um, and I, I pray that you receive it, that you receive it during this month of love. This is the month of love. Um, you know, love every day. We're supposed to love every day. We're supposed to give love every day and prayerfully receive love every day. Um, but this month is set aside on our calendar, uh, the Gregorian calendar, I should say, is set aside um, in America that we would honor a day of love and know how important it is in our life. You know, love is the greatest gift that any of us can receive, especially in the kingdom. Jesus, ah, yes, Jesus gave his life because he so loved the world. He gave his very life. He emptied himself of all of his glory, and we're going to be in pretty soon. Um, I think February the 16th, going to have a start counting down until the time of uh, the resurrection season. Uh, I think it's February the 16th that we begin counting down so that we can prepare our hearts and get ready to commemorate and honor all that Jesus did by emptying himself of all of his glory to come down to earth in order to die for each one of us so that we can have access. We can have access to the abundant life. And there are so many things, so many gifts, but the greatest gift is the gift of love. So today I'm gonna come back to that love thing. I'm gonna come back to it uh, shortly, but I wanna talk about the seven weapons, seven weapons of spiritual warfare, seven weapons of spiritual warfare. And at the end, I'm going to give you and talk about a bonus gift that we need to uh, recognize and honor that the Lord has given us that we might walk through each day of our life being victorious. And no matter which area that God has called us to, uh, there are seven areas of power. Uh, a lot of you like to refer to it as seven mountains. I refer to it as the seven areas of power in our culture, in our culture today, that the Lord wants us to rule and he wants us to reign, that he has given us dominion. He's given us dominion in these areas. Um, and 
those seven areas, we can recognize them. Some of you are called to the, you're called to government. There are many of you that may be watching and God has called you to rule and reign in government. You may have just run for office or maybe you may be considering run for office. You know, the anointing that is on our life is not just for the church, but it's for every area of power in our culture. So government is one. And you can also look at those of you who are operating in the education mountain, uh, one of the greatest mountains where we have influence on the next generation. So education is another mountain and we're operating right now on one of the mountains, the centers of influence, which is media. And we thank God, we pray for all of those who are part of this uh, broadcast, the women in ministry, uh, television broadcast, this YouTube live experience, all of the women that I share the platform with. The Lord has anointed us and called us to be media influencers. And we thank God for that. That is an area of power. Another area of power is that of the church. Uh, that's one area. Uh, we're called to uh, influence. I, I believe that uh, that's where we go to receive. And the church is not four walls. You know, if there's anything that we have learned um, during COVID-19, and I, we can refer to it as COVID-19 COVID now because even as we speak, there's a multipl multiplication of variants to COVID-19. But anyway, one thing that we learned during COVID-19 is that the church is not in the four walls. The, we are the church and God has called us outside of the four walls. It's just one area of power. Another area of power, I think, is where all of the leaders, no matter which um, area that we operate in, this is where all the leaders are raised up. And it is um, in the family, it's in the family mountain. So uh, thank God for those that are inside the home that are raising their children and seeking their, seeking the Lord according to what is the purpose for the children that you are raising, that he has entrusted to you to raise. You know, God chooses the family that we're to uh, be reared in. He is the one that chooses that family. And it's from that foundation that we receive teaching, we receive morals, trainings and morality. Uh, we receive prayerfully training in the word of God, how to be victorious in life. The Lord wants us to grow up. You know, we do have our church family, but um, each one of us, have a family that that we grew up in and no matter what that family where that where you grew up at God uses all of our experiences he doesn't waste any of our experiences all of us go through different things for a purpose in preparation for the anointing that we'll operate in and for the area that God will call us to so uh, the family is another area of power and um, also, as we look at, at another area of power, which is the military, and we pray for, uh, it is imperative that we pray for those who are protecting us, protecting our nation. The military is an area of power in our culture. Well, as we see, uh, we have seven areas of influence, and I pray that I gave them all to you, uh, but the Lord has given me seven weapons of warfare that you can begin, begin to uh, wage a good war. Uh, you know, there's no way that you can get away from warfare. We have an enemy. We fight. Uh, there's an enemy that does not want us to succeed. There's an enemy that does not want us to tap into our destinies and in our purpose. And you're thinking about a web a enemy that is in the in the human flesh. Well, according to Ephesians six, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Well, according to First Corinthians chapter ten, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But according to Ephesians six, as we're referring to who our real enemy is, 
our real enemy does not have flesh and blood, but is principalities and powers in, in high places. That is the enemy that we need to be concerned about. And we do not fight spiritual battles. This is a spiritual battle that we're in. And it's, a, it's an enemy that we cannot see, just like COVID-19. It's the enemy with no face. But the Lord has not left us helpless. He has not left us without weapons where we can take our stand according to the word of God. And we can begin to protect, protect our families, protect our cities, protect our nation according to these weapons, which are not carnal in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through five. Yes, they're not carnal. They are mighty weapons, mighty. We have, the Lord has given us mighty weapons, weapons so that we can begin to operate in these weapons, begin to pull down the strongholds in the attacks of the enemy that we encounter on a daily basis. Well, let's talk about uh, some of these weapons. And as I share with you, we're talking about uh, seven weapons of spiritual warfare. But uh, I'm going to give you a bonus weapon. And remember, at the beginning, we started talking about love. And I said that we were going to come back to uh, this, this idea, this, this powerful gift by the name of love. But there are weapons in the first weapon that I want to share with you is the word of God. The word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is active. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. That's what Hebrew 4 tells us. And you cannot fight on your own. You cannot fight with an opinion or a suggestion. We must fight with the word of God. Um, at an earlier broadcast, I shared with you that we are in the year 2021. We all know that. And when I look at that one as a part of the 20, the Hebrew letters and pictures, they, uh, Hebrew letters and alphabet, they paint a picture. And when we look at the Hebrew uh, number one, a left, um, it represents one. God wants to become first. He wants to become first. It also represents strength and power and uh, the creator, the one who is in charge. God is in charge of our life and he wants to become first. How do we put God first? We put God first by building a relationship with him. And how do we build a relationship? We build a relationship according to the word of God. We must seek the word of God, we must study the word of God, we must meditate upon the word of God. And when we are fighting a spiritual battle, it is the word of God that we do battle with our first weapon. And the next weapon that I wanna to talk to you about is that of prayer. Wow, I'm passionate about prayer. Every victory, that the Lord has given me in a battle, it was fought. That battle was fought on my knees. You must fight your battles, not with carnal weapons, not with cursing somebody out, not with uh, word for word, uh, insult for insult. The second weapon that you must realize that God has given, a, given us is the weapon of prayer. No matter what your outer continence may be, you can look as gentle as and harmless as a dove. You know, the Lord has told us that we need to be harmless as a dove, um, not to repay insult for insult, but to take every issue to the Lord in prayer. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. And when we take issues before the Lord, you can see your situation change. What type of situation? You can see health situations change. If you're fighting a battle right now uh, through COVID or one of your family members is fighting through COVID, we're reminded of what the Lord, one of his names is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. 
And as you begin to take those words in those scriptures in prayer and begin to stand upon the word, what the Lord has to say about healing, you're going to begin to see a shift take place in your situation. Either the Lord will change the situation or he will strengthen you so that you can stand up on the word of God and you can be victorious and you can be strong throughout that situation. So another weapon is that of prayer. In the third weapon I want to discuss with you just briefly is the weapon of worship. Wow. Are there any worship warriors out there that know how to get in worship? How to position yourself in worship like Jehoshaphat did when the battle, when the armies were coming against him and, and the prophet said, he began to speak to Jehoshaphat and he, he said, believe the prophets and you will prosper. And the prophet said, this battle is not yours. You do not need to fight it. This battle belongs to the Lord. And they begin to worship. They begin to sing. I want to tell you that some of you are losing some battles. It's because you're not taking time out to worship. The Lord wants you to live in an atmosphere of victory. And if you are in an atmosphere where you have doubt concerning God heard your prayers, a doubt concerning that you're able to come out of this situation, I want to encourage you to get into a place of worship to make worship a part of your daily, a part of your daily discipline, along with reading the word, along with prayer, why don't you add some worship in, into it? Let worship be your lifestyle. Worship, oh my, oh my. I believe that the Lord wants to cause you to be a worshiping warrior, to do battle in worship. Oh my, the Lord will not withhold anything from those that will seek him first, those that will stand up on his word, those that will come unto him. Jeremiah 33 and 3 in prayer, a word, a promise for prayer. He said, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know of. So we have the weapon of the word we have the weapon of prayer and we have the weapon of worship the next uh weapon i want to talk about is the word of the name of jesus i tell you the name of jesus is a strong tower it's like the name of the lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and they are saved. I want to tell you tonight, when you begin to make your place, position yourself, and to know what Jesus has already accomplished for you on the cross. As I mentioned, we're getting ready to go into 40 days prior to prior to Lent Sunday, prior, prior to Palm Sunday, and going through the season of Lent where we're preparing our hearts 40 days prior to the resurrection, resurrection day where we uh, begin to praise God and, and thank the Lord for him emptying himself of all of his glory coming down to earth to save us, to go to the cross for us. Um, he was bruised for our iniquity. Have you ever taken a look at Isaiah 53 and all that the Lord did, uh, all that he suffered through for us? Uh, I tell you, uh, the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to, to it and they are saved. When we pray, we don't pray in our own name. We don't stand on the word in our own name. We stand in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, I trust Jesus. I trust the name of the Lord. So the name of Jesus is another weapon that the Lord has given us and another powerful weapon in many of us, and I pray that at the beginning of the year, you took some time, according to Isaiah 58, it talks about the different fasts that the Lord, that pleases the Lord. Have you ever been on a fast? Do you know what the purpose of a fast is? It's not, I tell you what it's not, 
is not to twist the armor of God and to twist the arm of the Lord and get him to come into agreement and come into alignment with what you want. Fasting more so prepares our heart. It brings us into a deeper place of intimacy with the Lord. All those hindrances, all those distractions, um, those situations that you've gone through, the enemy wants to use it as a distraction to keep you from focusing on who you are, who God says you are. He says that you're the first and you're, you're the beginning and, and not the end. You're the, you're the first and not the last. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And when we begin to take some time to fast and to pray, to pull back from eating so that we can seek the name of the Lord, we become more strengthened and we begin to even um, desire to spend more time in prayer, to spend more time in the word. So Fasting is another weapon that God has given us that we can use um, to begin to wage a good warfare. Just like there are many in the word of God that fasted. Moses fasted for 40 days. Even Jesus, when he was fasting, he fasted for 40 days. And um, as he was beginning his ministry here in the earth and after he was baptized, the word of God says that he was driven to the desert. He was driven to that place and he went through 40 days of testing. That's what 40 means, testing. One of the means of 40. And he went through a time of fasting and prayer. And how, what strengthened him during this time? It was being in the word. And when we are fasting, we must, we must stay in the word. And so fasting is a weapon of warfare that the Lord has given us and it doesn't give us in, in the word of God. You have different number of days that, that are listed for fasting and prayer, 21 days. You, we know Daniel fasted 21 days and the answer, he began to pray, but the answer was kept from him. According to Daniel chapter 10, the answer was kept away from him because there was warfare in the heavenlies. But, as soon as Daniel began to pray and began to fast, the answer came. Sometimes when you don't see the answer right away, you must continue to pray. You must continue to fast because God is up to something in your life behind the scene. So fasting is another weapon. Our testimonies is another weapon. Oh, wow. Have you ever heard a saint give a testimony? And it was regarding the same thing that you were believing God for and you were standing in faith, isn't it how powerful it is when that saint began to share that testimony, how that unbelief is broken off your life, how that doubt is broken off your life. So sharing our testimonies is a powerful weapon in the kingdom of God. It not only blesses us, but it blesses the one who hear it. So don't hold back on your testimony, uh, people of God. You never know who will be hearing that testimony? Just like, for instance, uh, me coming on this live tonight. I don't know who I'm here for, but I know that the word is for somebody. You need to know how to battle in the realm of the spirit and how to be successful in that area. In another area, another area in uh, the seven weapon is that of thanksgiving. Oh, my. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And you know, when you begin to thank God for the past victories that he has given you, the past victories, have you ever experienced a victory in the Lord? Have you ever doubted and you begin to fast, you begin to pray, you begin to worship, you begin to share your testimony, and sometimes you're going through a difficult place. The enemy wants you to think that the Lord has not heard your prayers. I want to encourage you to begin to thank God for the past victories in your life. And as we begin to thank the Lord, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit shows up. The Lord shows up in that situation because if he did it before, oh my, he can do it again. I said, if he did it before, he can do it again. And there's somebody on here you're about to give up. You're about to throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't stop believing in God. 
I know waiting season, that's a difficult season for you to go through. But the Lord said you just continue to press your way and just begin to trust that God is able to do the exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think, hope, or imagine. And your breakthrough is on the way. And I declare and I decree that a breakthrough is on the way for some mother you've been praying and you've been believing God for your child. You've been believing God for your millennial. I want to tell you that breakthrough is coming. Some business owner, don't close your doors yet. I know you've experienced some difficult time during COVID-19. Do not give up yet. Do not give up. Do not sign the paper just of yet. Breakthrough is coming. Your deliverance is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming to your family. Don't give up. Don't stop praying. Woman of God, don't stop praying and trusting God for that change to come. Lord, you cannot change your husband. You have to trust your, trust the Lord in, in order to usher in that change. Come on, somebody. You cannot change your family member, but you can begin to trust in God and believe in God. Which brings me, if you remember I mentioned, I started talking about love and how powerful the love is that God has for us. Can I share with you the eighth bonus weapon? The greatest weapon of warfare, I believe, that the Lord wants you to get during this month of February is the weapon of love. Love is a weapon. Come on now. The scripture, the word says that when your enemy is hungry to feed him, when your enemy is thirsty to give him a cold glass of water. And I believe I'm speaking to somebody on tonight. Come on now. You have been frustrated. You have been offended for something that your enemy said about you, for something that your enemy did to you. I know that they stabbed you in the back, but I want to tell you that the weapon of love do not Pay insult, do not stab them in the back because they stabbed you in the back. But if you will rise up with the weapon of love, that you can love the Hades out of somebody, and you can begin to see God move and release you from that offense, God can begin to do miracles and work miracles in your heart and work miracles in your life. The enemy is after your health. When we hold on to bitterness, when we hold on to offense, when we hold on to frustration, it only, it only brings negativity into our own life. During this month of love, I want you to begin to love your enemy. Ah, come on now. You need to send your enemy a Facebook text, a Facebook message and say, I love you in the name of the Lord. You need to text your enemy and say, I love you in Jesus name. And there's nothing that you can do about it, but love me back. Yes, love covers a multitude of sin. And love is a powerful weapon of warfare. Well, I believe that somebody got delivered on fresh fire tonight. You were holding on to some bitterness and the Lord just helped you to let it go. The Lord just healed your heart. Come on. I believe that somebody that's watching on tonight, you didn't know how you were going to win this battle. But now you have seven weapons that you can ask the Lord to increase Increase these weapons and your desire to be in the word, your desire to pray, your desire to fast, to open up your mouth and share your testimony, to begin to worship, become a worship warrior. And you're going to begin to see breakthrough take place in your life like never before. Well, people of God, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we'll be here again on the Women in Ministry uh, television, YouTube broadcast uh, every Tuesday same time please continue to pray for us and don't forget um if the lord lays on your heart and i pray that you will sow into women in ministry you can cash out women women in ministry tv um if you were blessed by this word on tonight why don't you just do that let's bless 
of the woman of God, the visionary for this great ministry. And I thank God for each one of the women of God that I share this awesome opportunity with and platform. Don't forget to join me again next week. And please remember, love is a weapon of warfare. God bless you. Until next week.